We are now talking to Dynasty League football senior writer, Matt, the Zookeeper Price. What's going on, Matt? Not much, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Excited to talk some some NFL stuff with you guys. Absolutely. And we were about to get an, uh, a future NFL prospect on the show, but he decided to think that this is a central time show. And uh, oh, you got big time, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, what could I say? I'm just not. <laughs> we're, we're just not getting any luck with with dealing with everybody else and all the different, uh, you know directors or ESPN directors or whoever is listening to the show right now as we speak. Anyway, so why don't we get into it? Where did you get your name, Matt the Zookeeper Price? Well, I wouldn't say that's really my name. I mean, uh, the zookeeper is just my profession. So oh, yeah. I, I, I go with it as kind of like my brand or whatever, you know, for, on, on Twitter. Uh, it's, people know know me about know, – know, know me for the zookeeping part, and then they know me about the dynasty fantasy football stuff. So it's just kind of a, incorporating my real life into my, you know, my, my – I guess not my, my fantasy life. <laughs> so how do we become a zookeeper, my friend? Uh I mean, it's it's a really tough industry to, to get into. There's lots of ways to get into it. Uh, I went to a four-year school, got an internship right out of college, and 22 years later, here I am. Um, you can do it by volunteering and getting hired. You know, you really need some kind of life science background, uh, work at volunteer at animal shelters, that kind of stuff, just something to get put on a resume and, and, and throw in there just cause it's a really competitive field. You so know, if it, you can imagine lots and lots of people want to take care of animals. As everybody knows, we are talking to dynasty league football, senior writer, Matt, the zookeeper price. And it's so funny that you say a zookeeper because now, now that I know that you're a zookeeper, I could just tell everybody I'm a veterinarian or a partial assistant <laughs> veterinarian. And then I could go to the Bronx there Zoo and go. say, could I be the zookeeper here? You know, could I take care of the bears or the chickens or the, the tigers and lions and bears? I don't know. Anyways, uh, why don't we get into some football conversation, okay? Because uh, over the last couple of days, Debo Samuel doesn't seem like he's very happy over there in San Francisco. There are stories coming out from San Francisco that he has gone to the management and said that he wants to be traded. And now, uh, a week from the draft, there are quite a few teams actually making offers to San Francisco what are your thoughts to this Debo Samuel situation? And do you think he gets traded before the draft? I mean, it's the fault of all of these crazy wide receiver contracts that have come out. And, you know, you don't really see these wide receivers getting a lot of negotiations in, when they're still in their rookie contract. But, I mean, when you pay Christian Kirk $70 million a contract, and then you've got Devontae Adams and Tyreek signing massive deals, you know, these guys are, are ready to say – let's lock me up. Let's, let's get me paid before I, I go out and test the open market. You know, they don't want to get franchise tagged. They want a long-term deal. So uh, I understand where Debo's at. I think he deserves it uh, in terms of like, you know, where he could go. I think the jets are, I think they're the betting odds favorite right now. So they're probably that seems likely to also, yeah. yeah, they've got the connection between Robert Sala and uh, you know, the previous, his previous stint with, with 49ers. So that seems like a likely spot. I don't really think it gets done though. It seems like the 49ers are pretty intent on keeping him. You know, maybe that causes him to sit out through training camp, you know, all of the boring stuff. He's a veteran now he's been through the off season. He knows, uh, the, the drill when it comes to that. So he doesn't necessarily need to be there. Right. So this could all be a ploy, you know, obviously he does want to get paid. Obviously he probably I mean, I don't know. Who knows where, where his head I would say he probably doesn't want to get traded. He just wants to get paid by the 49ers. So we'll just have to see if that happens. So he's come out and said also that he doesn't want to be used as a quote-unquote hybrid wide receiver running back anymore, which I, I guess is most of the frustration with why he was annoyed with the 49ers organization. But even if he does get traded, do you still see whoever he gets traded to using him in that kind of role too? I mean, I think it requires a, a a creative coaching staff to do it. If he goes to the Jets, for instance, certainly they could they could replicate what they did with Debo. So, uh, I mean, but any team that's trading for him probably wants Debo to be happy. And if that's what's making him happy, then uh, I would assume not. But I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to do what's the best for the team. If the best for the team is for the Debo to run, you know, five six times up the middle, then that's how he's going to be used. As everybody knows, we are talking to Dynasty League football senior writer, Matt, the zookeeper price. Um, So why don't we get into this uh, week's draft? And obviously, Baker Mayfield is being dangled around. Uh, There are stories coming out from Cleveland. Uh, They're not uh, like a week ago. They were saying that they were not trading him less for less than a first round draft pick. Now you're hearing they'll, they'll be interested in possibly giving, you know, taking a second and maybe a fifth or a fourth round draft pick. 
What are your thoughts to Baker Mayfield going into the draft? Do you think Baker gets traded? I, I, I really don't have a great handle on this particular situation. There's only a couple of good landing spots out there. Are they really going to want to trade, not only give up draft capital to go get Baker Mayfield, but then turn around and have to pay him a ton of money rather than draft uh, one of these rookies in the first round uh, somewhere, you know? So I don't know if, if they come with the right deal, I can see Cleveland doing it. I just don't see the spot. Like, Carolina doesn't seem interested. Seattle doesn't seem interested. You know, maybe he goes and backs somebody up. Maybe he goes and competes in in uh, in, in in New Orleans or something like that. You know, they acquired an extra draft pick, presumably to go get a quarterback, and maybe they decide they want to go that way and and draft two uh, complementary players for a new quarterback or or Jameis coming back off an of injury. So it's really difficult to say. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of interest from the league uh, right now. Um, and, and the fact that they keep lowering their price tag like that kind of speaks to that. I, I feel so bad for Baker Mayfield. I really I do. do. I, I really I do. do. I, I'm not a big fan of Baker, but I'm starting to become a big fan of his because uh, now people are really pressing, saying that he's not, he's worthless. He's good for nothing. The Browns fans practically kicked him to the, you know, kicked him to the wolves. Uh, this is like the same guy that was one play away from taking his team to an AFC title game and maybe a Super Bowl. Uh, that was the same year that Kansas City uh, went to the Super Bowl against Tampa, obviously. But they still could have maybe they gave they they could have given Tampa a better a better opportunity, uh, a better chance to win than obviously the um, Chiefs. The Chiefs. So yeah, uh, I just you I know, feel bad for the kid. I really do. I, I do too, and I think he did, did himself no favors by playing with that torn labor. I think it was torn in like the second half of the week one or week week two, or anyway, earlier in the season. Instead of just like getting healthy, he continued to tough tough it out and keep playing, which is probably what the coaching staff wanted him to do. And I think clearly it affected his play on the field. If you go back just a year ago, uh, the, the previous season of 2020, and he looked like a completely different quarterback, uh, and it was the same system. So. Uh, it's unfortunate that, that I think that injury really affected his play, and now he, it's got him in this situation. And also, his wife speaking on social media doesn't really help the situation either. <laughs> no, I mean, definitely not. All the commercials, you oh know, God. it just makes him a little bit of a, a, a laughing stock, I guess. But, I feel so bad. Uh, I feel and, bad, too. Yeah, and, and by the way, his jersey was a top five selling jersey this year, and now all of a sudden he's going to be a backup somewhere? It doesn't make yeah. any sense. It's, it's a shame. And the Cleveland fans out there should be ashamed of themselves. They really should because they finally had a quarterback that they drew drafted uh, that they really built to be their quarterback of the future. And now all of a sudden you throw him to the wolves because you want Deshaun Watson, who, by the way, hasn't played on a football field for two years. So good luck on that. And I think Deshaun's a great player. At one point, I thought he was the best quarterback in the league before uh, this whole situation happened. But Deshaun, being that you haven't been on the field for two years, that's a long time time yeah and baker wanted to play in cleveland he wanted to be there too that's the heartbreaking part he wanted to play for those fans so it's it's really too bad that's happened to him so another quarterback that's been in rumors lately has been kyler murray uh, rumor says he wants 40 million dollars a year and the cardinals aren't willing to give him to him. then steve Kahn comes out and says today and says that they're not trading him so do you think he ends up getting traded and if so where could you see a fit for him as talented as he is i i can't i i can't imagine baker's getting traded he's gonna he's gonna cost he's gonna cost uh, kyler murray you know, that's what he meant. That's what he meant. For future first, like like he, there's no way they're trading Kyler Murray. I, I would hesitate to even speculate where he could land. Any any almost any team, you know, uh below the 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 replacement level quarterback Meridian would be interested in Kyler, and maybe plenty in the top, you know, twelve uh would be interested in Kyler. I mean the the NFC quarterback perspective is 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 rough right now outside of Brady and Rodgers and, and a few other guys, right? So there would be a a, a million suitors for for Kyler Murray if he was actually available. As everybody knows, we are talking to Dynasty League football senior writer Matt, the zookeeper price. So, Matt, you look at this draft right now, the top 10. Everybody keeps talking about Hutchinson possibly going one. I watched a couple documentaries of Thibodeau and how some people say Thibodeau could fall all the way to 10, maybe even 11, which makes absolutely no sense where, where he, he was a top talent going in from high school, top two talent. He goes to college football. He dominated college football for three years, and people are still saying that this guy is not going to be a good NFL player. Are you, are you surprised that Kevon Thibodeau is, is looked at as not one of the top prospects in this year's draft by all these elite, elite drafts, draft people out there? No, I think he's absolutely one of the, you know, this is a fantastic year for, for edge players and pass rushers in general. 
uh, and, and Thibodeau is right there with them. So uh, right there at the top of the, you know, there wasn't, wasn't more than a month or two ago where we were talking about as a contender for the one or two, number one or number two overall pick. So I think some of his off the field stuff, you know, uh, you know, his quote unquote attitude, his demeanor, whatever you want to call it has, has affected the way front offices maybe feel about him. And that's, that's probably the wrong, the wrong, the wrong path. Right. So I still fully expect him to be like a top five, top seven kind of, kind of pick. Uh, and not really fall out of that first first uh, top ten. So being you're a guy that studies dynasty fantasy football, obviously these wide receivers are getting a lot of traction, especially with the fantasy Twitter. There's a debate on who the yep. best one is going to be. So where do you stand on on these wide receivers, and when do you think the run in the first round could start for the wide receivers? I think it starts at ten at a at, at the latest with the Jets. You know, I think they're clearly looking for somebody. They've shown interest in Debo. They showed interest in Tyreek Hill before. Uh, he chose the the dolphin. So the, it seems like they are clearly in play there. Uh, so in this, this wide receiver class is very, very good. Like I think it's six to seven deep. I think that many, at least six uh, goes in the first round. Uh, and it's, and it's such an interesting class too, because do you want, uh, I mean, there's a lot, there's not a lot of size in this draft outside of, of, of guys like Drake London, but there are a lot of players like Garris Wilson, who runs great routes, who, who shows incredible body control and, and can catch the ball and at any possible angle. That seems to be to me, the, one of the favorites to go, one of those two guys. Uh, I would prefer uh, Garrett Wilson out of, out of those two, just because I think he can win in a lot of different ways. And, and, and I see some separation issues potentially with Drake, Drake London at the next level. Um, but yeah, the, this receiver class is, I mean, I can go on and on about any of these guys if you want to uh, get kind of more fine tuned information on them, but these top six to seven, at least that are going to see first round capital, I think are going to be really good NFL players. 